the sponsor for the award is PHI Air Medical. So I'm going to ask Chris Hall to come up and uh, present the award winner and the awards, and then we'll uh, move on. So Chris, it's, uh, it's yours to present. All right. Um, a comment was made earlier today uh, talking about the, the magic of the 911 system in America. And, and I think it's a, a standard that, you know, we all accept that anybody in the lay public, when they call 911, you know, we all know they expect someone to show up and then it magically does every time. And as air medical providers, we're part of that. You know, when someone, when a provider calls for help to get somebody from A to B, we arrive. And we do it consistently. We're high reliability organizations and we do this and we do it well. Um, Unfortunately, I think the lay public doesn't quite always realize, but everyone in this room realizes, that there's so much work that goes into the support that lays the foundation for success <coughs> for the transport from A to B. And so for us, uh, for PHI, we're honored to continue to sponsor, to sponsor this award that recognizes those organizations that really truly go beyond the call and try and uh, do their part to help increase uh, the health uh, of the local communities, increase the livability of local communities, and help the uh, uh, create success with our extended team members, both internally and externally. And so that's why PHI is happy to be part of this. Um, I, I'm happy to say, and thank Marty for letting me for do this, uh, I'd like to uh, offer, uh, congratulate Lifelight Network of, of Aurora, Oregon, as a recipient of the Ames 2014 Community <laughs> Lindsay's here with us today from Lifelight Network, and I got a chance to talk to Lindsay. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I'm actually from Oregon, and I live in Medford, Oregon. So this is a nice connection to see Lifelight Network get this award. Um, to put it in some perspective, with their Oregon Pediatric Simulation Program, they have a footprint within Oregon that's about the size of the state of New Jersey, where they are going out and providing pediatric simulation education with high-fidelity simulators, wireless simulators, so where they can actually run this program, take this out to rural volunteer EMS agencies and fire departments, set up a simulator in a, in a crash vehicle, and then run the entire evolution of the call all the way through transition of care at the local facility. Uh, truly a, a tremendous opportunity for those, uh, for those volunteer agencies who may not have the budget to do this on their own. Um, Lifelight Network does this with the support of the Oregon Health Authority. Um, they had initial support from Oregon Health Sciences University. They have the Office of Rural Health. Tremendous amount of support that goes into making this possible for, for both the citizens of Oregon as well as the EMS agencies and fire departments. So congratulations again, Lindsay. Fantastic yeah. job. Over to, uh, about Redmond and, and uh, Dallasport, mid-Oregon. Um, we've used this program and expanded it. When I started with Life Flight seven years ago, we were just sort of, this was an idea and it's grown over the past couple of years, and so we've spread it all the way over to Ontario and all the way to the coast. Um, and as Chris said, it was something that we wanted to bring to rural providers who otherwise, and there's a lot of rural providers in Oregon, and they have no access to anything like this. They're used to the little half mannequins or having to just fake that there's a patient there on the table. Um, and so getting to take these wireless mannequins that talk to them, which always freaks them out. <laughs> I want my mom, or don't touch me. And they bling and talk and all that. And getting to use their own equipment and stuff that they're familiar with. Uh, and it's also been really great because we invite members of the community who act as moulage actors or observers to it, and then bring in the local media, the little newspapers, and belittle it, but you know what I mean, <coughs> newspapers that don't get to see something like this, um, do a hands-on scenario the first day, second day we create a um, mass casualty drill, and like I said, they get to use their own equipment and, and practice assessment of the patients and all the way through into the treatment of them at the receiving uh, critical access hospitals. Um, it's grown, it's something I want to continue to grow, be able to provide, uh, really benefits the community, and then when I get a phone call, from the providers who say, today we just did a mass casualty, we did a school bus into a car, this happened out in Astoria, and thanks to the education you provided, we knew what to do. We knew how to package these patients and put them in our ambulance and rush them, rush them off. And that makes it really important. So I'm very happy. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> that kind of goes to two individuals that uh, have previously served on the board, have also served as uh, past president and uh, chairman. Uh, one of them, Jerry Pagano, couldn't be here, so unfortunately I'll have to make the trip down to see Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> as a ward. Uh, 
on the on his own. <laughs> Takes a week. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So uh, anyway, so uh, for the team guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's tough. It's tough. So anyway, so Tim, if you could come up, uh, just like to give you a little token of our appreciation. Um, Just a couple of words. It's really great to see a, a group here at the new modified spring conference to be going forward. Um, it's also great to see Ames moving forward and continuing to increase its abilities and you know its leadership of our industry. Um, and that's thanks to all the volunteers who participate on the boards and the committees and and really make a big effort and and all the members. So. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart as I see other past presidents in the background and, and folks who have given us given a lot more than I have. Um, and if you're interested, step forward because they're always looking for volunteers. The old people need to move on and let the new people come on in. Thank you all very much. Uh, to Ames and the Foundation. Um, we're trying a few different things. Again, we talked about a different format for this. We're, we've got some new and different and I think exciting speakers as we've seen for the last couple years at AMTC and will con uh, continue this year at AMTC. We've got a great MTLI class coming up. We've got a great SMTA class coming up. We've got you know some, some great events that we're doing with the Drive Across America for safety uh, that I would encourage you again to, to look into and support. So we're different aims than we were two years ago, actually two years ago yesterday when I joined. Uh, we'll be at different aims next year than we are now, and, and we can't do that without your support. So thank you all for all your efforts in support of our industry and our association and, and our foundation. Uh, I would also like to once again thank our sponsors. I'd like to thank Bell Helicopter for sponsoring the lunch. I'd like to thank Airbus Helicopter for sponsoring this reception. I'd like to thank PHI for sponsoring uh, the Community Service Award. And I'd also like to thank Chris for wearing good Ohio State colors, scarlet and gray. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, yeah, thanks very much. I also want to recognize, I, I'll call out, I didn't do this uh, before we broke, but Jennifer Higgins is with uh, Chamber Hill Associates, who uh, has been a great friend of our industry and is again our industry partner in government relations uh, as we go forward this next year. And so thanks, Jennifer, and to everybody who participated today. I think we've, we've had a great event. We'll get better next year. We'll start doing this a little bit earlier next year, but with all your participation, uh, I look forward to increased success in the coming years. Uh, thanks again very much. Appreciate it. Thanks.